the same way you don't want to receive wounds, right? No one wants to get injured or get hurt and receive wounds, whereas you would like to receive kisses, right? Kisses are positive, wounds are negative, but it's saying here that the, fa that the wounds of a friend, right? Someone who's a true friend to you, if, even if they injure you, even if they wound you, the wounds of a friend uh, are faithful, whereas the kisses of an enemy, right? So someone who doesn't love you, someone who hates you, but they're going to outwardly, you know, give you these, these expressions and give you these kisses and stuff is saying that they're deceitful, right? That's vain. It's not real. Oftentimes, what you're going to see is that the things that are most valuable, and especially like in friendships, what's most important is not just what's on the surface and what's said, you know, outwardly, but it's more on the inside and finding a really good friend may be difficult to do, but it's really important to find a good friend. It's not always easy. And as we're going to see here, some people are going to try to be your friend, but they're really your enemies. Just like the Bible's talking about here, the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Right? Someone trying to gain your favor, but they don't really care about you, but they're going to do this outward stuff to try to uh, win over your affection, whereas someone else who might actually really care about you, they may you know, injure you, so to speak, with a rebuke, with an open rebuke, right? And you might receive that, but, but they're the ones that actually cares about you as opposed to an enemy that doesn't care about you at all, but is going to give you the kisses and, and say the right things, but at the end, they don't, they don't have any care or love for you at all inside their heart. It's just a facade. The Bible says in Proverbs uh, 20, Verse number 19, he that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets, therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. So just as we see, you know, the kisses of an enemy are deceitful, watch out. One of the red flags that you need to be aware of is someone who's flattering with their lips. And we're going to get into the talebearer a little bit later in the sermon because that's going to be part of this as well. But when you're making friends with people, you need to be aware Okay, and, and this is just a warning. This isn't to, to make anyone freak out, but it's, it's wisdom that we need to have. We need to be aware that church is a place where you can find some of your best friends in the world. You can find people who love God, good people that are going to be there for you through thick and thin, and hopefully find some of the best friends you've ever had within church, and especially within a church like this where we've got a great church, a great group of people. But it's also a place where you can befriend some of your worst enemies. And we, we have to be aware of that. I don't say that so that everyone can be like on a, on a witch hunt or on a hair trigger to try to like figure out, okay, who's the Judas? Is it you? Is it, you know, like, and, and, and have that type of an attitude, right? We, we want to be, to be open and, 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 you know, seeking good with people, but we also need to be aware that at some level we have to have a guard because wolves will probably be present throughout the entire existence of this church. I mean, you can never say exactly at, on, at one given moment, but you know, a few months ago I never would have thought that we had a wolf in the church if I just were to think about every single individual in the church going, you know, just, just think on every, every person, every member. You know, I'm not thinking, oh, yeah, that person's, you know, it wasn't just like, oh, yeah, of course, that guy's a wolf. But then it turns out you see some information, you see some, some evidence, and you're like, wow. Well, that's kind of a surprise. 